Well, in order to get this thing moving, I'm going to go ahead and just announce the names and pop them out here. Um, I'm really, really happy on behalf of Stargate Multiverse Track and Dragon Con to welcome Mitch Pelegi. I said that. Is he coming? There he comes. No, I didn't. I didn't. I swear. Mitch, there you go. Mr. Alex Sahara. Woo! Right there, you just take one seat at a time there. And Mr. Spence. Jennifer Spence. Jennifer Spence. Others are on their way. We'll get them on as soon as we can. Hello. Yeah, the real people are on their way. I don't know. <laughs> Although, I have been requested to wear this. It's a, a gift from the Dutch fans. Ooh. Ooh. A little, little Dutch girl hat, the little wooden shoes and the tulip. So there you go. So I'll, I'll strip off in a minute. There you go. Those little Dutch girls. And I wasn't actually kidding. I'm going to strip off. <laughs> How's well, everyone? What, what a great way to start the <laughs> Um, I have to stand, so... Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. You want a little music? A music yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna put his shirt on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eh? There we go. This, this panel started off with the most bizarre little we'll start Monday night panel. Love it. Okay. Um, a question that uh, I want to get us started off with today is... Uh, um, what brings you to Dragon Con? What is it that you want to see here this weekend? A bunch of scandal, scandally clad young ladies walk. <laughs> that's what I was promised, that's what I want. Um, ditto. <laughs> there you go. No, I, you know, it's kind of weird. I've never been to Dragon Con before, and I saw some pictures last week about it. And this, this gentleman took 3,500 pictures in one weekend. And it was crazy. And I was just like, the costumings rivals anything I've ever worn on set. It's crazy. So that's what I want to see is crazy costumes. Yeah, crazy costumes and scantily clad men. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone out there that thinks that we can live up to that somehow? Yeah, yeah it's here. Uh, it'll happen. Um, something our fans always want to know from our guests is, uh, what are you up to these days as far as acting, work, and that sort of thing? We always like to catch up with you guys. Uh, I'm doing uh, uh, the television series Dallas, which they brought back um, two seasons ago. Okay. I know it's not the genre, but it's uh, but it's a job and it's a lot of fun. So I, I actually I actually started my career working out as an extra on Dallas 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, I absolutely. It's a total. It's a total. Uh, but I, I, you know, when I when I first went on the first episode, I did. Linda Gray came up to me. and She goes, "We're so happy to have you on the show." And as a baby, I used to stand behind you as an extra 30 years ago. <laughs> were you standing, or was it like you were a baby? Because you looked really, really young back then. Right? No, I'm. I'm old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to give him credit. You all saw that. <laughs> Thank you, bud. <laughs> um, myself, I, I, I just finished. A, it's like, you guys know about this. Like, actors, it's like feast or famine. And it's like, seven months was pretty quiet. Around Vancouver, you know, watching it rain. And then I did five movies within three weeks of each other. Wow. And, uh, and I actually produced my own, uh, well, my buddy's feature. I co-produced it called uh, Patterson's Wager. Check that out when you get a chance. Uh, it's about faith, family, love, and Sasquatch. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a, actually romantic oh, comedy weirdness with Sasquatch. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just did, and uh, I'm up for a series. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, so there's a thing called "When Calls the Heart." Um, hopefully, going to be in that starting this fall. So we'll see. Just uh, up, thanks. I'll know probably 24 or 48 hours. So there you go. Ooh, so I'll find out here while yes. you're here. Yeah. Um, well, I'm also working on a show called Continuum. I'm hoping you guys have seen it. Thank you for watching! Um, so that's been a lot of fun. And we're on a hiatus right now, but we go back in November. And Luvia Peterson and Brian Markinson are also here. So you'll be seeing them too. Um, and then... Uh, my, uh, my husband, Ben Ratner, also uh, wrote and directed a feature film that we shot last summer that'll be coming out in the festival soon. Yeah. It appears we have Mr. Christopher Jones.
Well, uh, Chris, just so you can catch up because you're behind. Um, yeah, we really do, don't we? Um, too. <laughs> Very nice. We're uh, basically having everyone catch up. Jim is telling us what she's doing now, and if you'll answer that question, it's it your turn after her. So, oh, uh, did I so, interrupt you? Well, I think I was basically done. It's called Down River, feature film, so I'll, I'll be tweeting and being annoying about it, so I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Christopher? Hi. Um, I, I just wrapped a movie uh, yesterday. Uh, oh, wow. it, it, it's from the people who, who brought you um, Sharknado. <laughs> yeah. why, why not, man? Why not? You're going to be on the Oscar red carpet yeah. soon. Yeah. Yes. I, I'll be rolling it up at the end. <laughs> um, it, it's called uh, uh, Meta Shark versus Meta Shark. Yes. And uh, right before that, uh, I, I did a movie um, called Low Lives with Quentin Aaron, the big, huge guy from The Blind Side and Google Store. <laughs> Quentin Aaron is the biggest man I've ever seen in my life. He is 6'8, 520 pounds. Wow. Who's that again, Chris? Uh, Quentin Aaron. He, he's the big kid. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, you, know, you, can't, you know, you can't. Quentin five years ago. <laughs> um, and then before that, um, right before that, I did a movie called Reaper with um, Danny Trejo and Vinnie Jones. Um, so yeah, it's been, um, and right before that, I did a movie called Knock Em Dead. And, uh, and then when, when I go back, I'm doing a movie called The Informants with um, Don Johnson, Robert Forrester, Harvey Keitel, and Michelle Rodriguez. So, yeah. Cool. So, Chris, I'm going to bounce the next question to you. Yes, I'm keeping uh, my ex-wife quiet. Uh, but uh, I wanted to ask, uh, a lot of our fans always ask, um, if you could be any other character in any other sci-fi, fantasy-type series, who would you be? Why? I'd be that freaky board chick. <laughs> yeah, the board queen. There you go. Because I'd never leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> we're just kind of running down the line oh, here. Oh, oh sorry. If I could be okay. any other sci-fi character, um, that is tricky. Probably, I'd be K9. Yeah. Doctor Who. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I have an answer, because I just met the guy I would be. I just met John Delancey, who played Q. So I would be Q, because, listen, for years I've thought I was omnipotent, and, you know, I think I'm just confirming. Uh, I like my tilt, because I, uh, I got, I got the head, man. Give me the go, give me the go. This would have been a great deal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. Indeed. Just so you know, the last two weekends ago in Chicago, Dan Payne and I did a little cabaret number of the greatest star, uh, Stargate auditions that didn't quite make it. And um, we had Chris, Dan Payne doing Christopher Walken, auditioning for Jack O'Neill, but he didn't want to, he wanted to audition for this talcum powder guy. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty good. So you've been, you've been parodied by Dan Payne doing Christopher Walken. So there you go. It was very funny. Oh, and then we have Bill Shatner auditioning. Mm -hmm. I did Bill Shatner. And then, uh, oh yeah, Keanu Reeves auditioning for uh, Daniel Jackson. Dan Payne is that, like, it's too bad he's not here, he's actually working on a, movie, or a TV series up in Canada, he'll be here tomorrow, but he was doing Canada and he's leaning backwards, I'm in the star hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny, too funny. Anyway, um, I always thought Charles Barkley would be a good teal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Neil, that's what took <laughs> Um, 
so Chris, we asked the others just a minute ago, but uh, what what do you look forward to seeing at this Dragon Con? You've been with us a couple of times, so it's not like you're, you're the veteran here, so. Um, I, I just want to see as much nudity as possible. <laughs> As a veteran, his answer is the same as our rookies. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and I'm trying to avoid furries at all costs. Tell us about furries, Christopher. <laughs> all right, I think we're I, just I about have, ready. I do have a raccoon costume in my in my room, though. <laughs> oh, More than I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, Chris. TMI. <laughs> I think we're ready to start our Q&A lining up. Um, will and Kelly are going to have mics um, here in this, this aisle and this aisle. If you will go ahead and form up and we'll get some questions from the audience. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's see. In the meantime? I got a question. In the meantime? There you go. No, I'm not worried. No, that's not me. Somebody in the wind, or well, just before this thing asked like, uh, me like how many characters I played, because they recognized me from uh, playing the hippie Michael in 1969. Oh. But I did, I've done like, Eight or ten episodes. Thirty-seven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I, in one episode, I did a shy one in Beast of Burden, but I played nine other characters in that episode. Because then what they would do is they just like change the costume a little bit, and then like you know put some little goobas on it and say, okay, now you're a you're a bloodhound. Go, 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 hunt yourself down. Yeah. And then like, oh, you just put that. Now you're a you're a slave carrying the thing. Okay, great. And now you're carrying water. Yeah. And now you're carrying this guy. And I'm like, now, now just cry. And we're like, ooh. Do you, do you ever wonder who you are? Hey, I, I, in real life? When you go to sleep after all that makeup, and I, I would wake up in the morning, and it would still feel like it was on my face. So I'd be like, I'm going, oh god, oh god. So yeah, you do wonder, but uh, yeah, I, I play like something like 24 characters or something, in, but mainly just the main guys in about eight different shows. So yeah, pretty crazy. Anyway, pretty crazy. All right, if we have a question from Kelly's party. Thank you, thank you very much. A question? What was that loud? I have a question for Jennifer Spence. Hi, on um, the second season DVDs of Universe, Peter Kalamis and Patrick Gilmore did a special about an episode they were contemplating doing. You may want to share this with Chris, because I don't think he knows about it, but... Oh. I don't you know shit about Universe. Oh, no, he didn't! Oh! <laughs> the destroyers of the franchise. <laughs> Have we actually ever met? This is actually the first time Christopher and I have met. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, We're all yeah. pretending we know each other yeah, and stuff when you come I out. And I, I actually only met the people uh, at Unirite. I came to set one of your first days, and uh, literally the only thing I said to everyone was, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, two seasons in, I guess maybe, maybe something happened. <laughs> It's because you weren't there, okay? <laughs> MGM went bankrupt too, let's add that. Anyway. But no, I, so Christopher knows nothing about this, no, about I Peter and you Patrick's. Should, you should explain maybe the, the what this is about. What I really found interesting is that most of what you said was it deleted. It was sort of beeped out about this encounter you wanted to have with the two gentlemen. And it really sounded fascinating. If you could just give us a little insight as to what your scene would be with these two gentlemen in the universe. I would really like that. Yeah, so for anyone who hasn't seen it, what it is, it's, it's something on the special features that Patrick and, and uh, Patrick Gilmore and Peter Klamis put together, because they're crafty, those two, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, and it was just like this little uh, spoof that they did, and, and uh, like a special project that they had in mind of what we would Very do. sensitive the, the popping of the peas. Um, and uh, so they wanted to do this, this sort of love scene with... Um, you know, uh, a couple different people, and so the, the idea, the joke was that they were going around to the different actors and asking how they felt about it, and everyone just thought what they were doing was a big joke and not taking it seriously. And then they come up to me, playing myself, and I think it's a great idea! And I'm like, yeah, let's do this, and then we could do this and this and this, and so what the gentleman is asking is, is what was I really saying that was all bleeped out? And I actually made a deal with Ivan Bartok that he would never release what I actually said, because if I did, people would never talk to me again. My parents would disown me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be pretty. So, um, I can't tell you. <laughs> I'd be, like, be like this. Well, guys. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, exactly. I suggest you watch it. And Chris, you would be very interesting. <laughs> Chris would fit right in, for sure. 
On Will's mind. That must mean it's dirty. <laughs> Well, Lou Diamond Phillips took up his pants, so it's like that's... <laughs> and did you see the La Bamba? <laughs> I wasn't there that day! Dag Nabbit, I wish I was. <laughs> Seeing all of its glory. <laughs> Overall, this question is for Chris. Uh, have you ever worked with uh, the actor Terry Crews, you know, the father from Everybody Hates Chris? And being the, the jokesters that both of y'all are, would you ever consider doing, you know, like a series, a spoof like on Supernatural, where you're playing uh, the, the sons of the hunter, you know, Bobby's friend that got killed, and Terry playing his sons? Um, I've never worked with Terry, but uh, we, we've met on occasion, and he is truly one of the funniest cats alive. And uh, he... Sound guy's ears are bleeding. <laughs> um, do you guys know who Terry Crews is? You guys, do you guys know Terry? So Terry's also a very big man, you know. And so, like, when actors hug each other, you know, especially if you, you know, you always like tense up. So, you know, when I met Terry, I tried to like tense up and everything and have everything swole up. And, and Terry just literally hit me with his chest. <laughs> And I felt very insignificant. <laughs> and then I took off my pants. Um, no, I, I, to the truth, I would love to work with Terry. I, you know, it, it would just be one of those things where you kind of just hang on for the ride, you know, just kind of let him do his thing. Um, but yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm a big fan of his. Kelly, Hi, guys. Okay, over here. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, my question is, um, what is, for all of you, going down the line, what is your best blooper? Not necessarily with any particular show, but of all your time, what is the one thing that you think back on and you just can't help laughing? Like, it was that funny. Or any, for any show? Any show. Mm -hmm. Context, though, well, so. I'm not a very funny person, so. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be intentionally funny. I got one for you. It was an accidental blooper. It was the first Stargate episode I did with uh, Chris and Amanda and the guys, and I played Zales as fishgill-faced alien. Okay, so we were in these mylar suits or mylar dresses, basically, right to the floor, hotter than Hades. It was like 38 degrees or something in Vancouver that summer. It was just nuts. Uh, that's Celsius, that's like 2 million degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, it's the calculation, you work it out. Um, but I'm lying on a gurney after being zat gunned, and they're examining me, and you know, it's Richard Dean and Amanda and somebody else, I can't remember, but it was hot. So, the takes went on, and I'm just lying there baking like a potato, seriously, silver covered potato, and all of a sudden, I fell asleep. But I didn't know that. And Amanda, so my, my blooper is Amanda. I wake, I wake up, open my eyes, and Amanda's face is over top of me going, Alex, you're snoring. Because <laughs> the mask is completely across your nose, there's no air exchange, so I'm lying there going... <laughs> uh -huh, what? <laughs> so that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, you can't follow it, I know. But yeah, you know, it's like, follow that. Yeah, right. Um, well, I think... Actually, one of the, the, the crazier and totally unintentional, as they usually are, ones was, um, it was on the set of Universe, and it was Patrick Gilmore's, Gilmore, don't tell him, I screwed up his name, um, Patrick Gilmore's close-up, and I can't remember what episode it was, I think it was season two, and he has a line, we're in the, the new Destiny bridge area, and he has some line, and then I have a line right after him, which was supposed to be, it's a font because he's referring to Courier or something or the name of a planet, I think it was, and then I say, oh, it's a font. But prior to that, we'd been joking around about Star Wars and all this, it's a trap, and doing like all this stuff. And so I guess it was just in my head, and as I was walking by, he said his line, and I was like, it's a trap. And so I just totally screwed up his clothes up. So, yeah, totally unintentional. Sorry, Patrick. Um, I never really had any bloopers because it's really hard to bloop indeed. Uh, uh, mine are more like, you, you know, I, I'm a big 
fan of nudity. <laughs> so on any set that I'm on, if you're coming out of an elevator, any closed door that you have to walk into a room or something, you're, you're, you're very likely to be met with one of my body parts. Uh, I, I think the, the vet, I, I just got uh, Elizabeth Rome, I, she was from Buffy and Law and Order, plays my wife <coughs> in Mega Shark versus Mega Shark. <laughs> And um, so she, you know, she's used to working with like, you know, Sam Waterston and, you know, like serious cats. And then she gets me. Um, so we had this thing where uh, the setup of it is I take this submersible shark and save her from the bigger shark. And <laughs> So, jump into the water and fish her out of the water, and um, so she's you know like into it and like she's had the struggle and da da da, and so she's not she's actually submerged for the first part of the shot. So when I pull her up, much to her chagrin, I didn't have pants on. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my lawyer is calling now. Um, but uh, one of the good ones, was, we, we, you know, we, we did the serious thing in, 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 in Unending, where Bo dies. And uh, Amanda has to be, you know, suitably emotional. And I meet her in the hall. Well, I had our wardrobe department make me a G-string. That, that, had a, that had a star date on the cross. <laughs> so, and they also made my pants tear away. So I, I didn't have to like have anything undone or anything. So it's, it's an over me to Amanda. So right as we roll, I undo the pants. <laughs> and so everyone starts laughing and I'm trying to keep everyone quiet because Amanda's on the other side of this door. And uh, so Robert Cooper was directing the episode and Coop can't figure out what's going on. So they pan down. <laughs> so, and little did I know there were some MGM executives. Uh, <laughs> but it was Hank Cohen, so. Um, so they pan down. And so on the monitors, like my bare ass. <laughs> and no one yelled cut, so. Amanda opens the door, and so they tilt back up, and all you can see is like my shoulder and her face, like. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was that was good. <laughs> In that vein, I, when I was doing the X Files, we had a, I was doing a scene with. Uh, thank you. Is that cheap? Uh, <laughs> um, we were, I was doing a scene with Jillian, and, and uh, she comes, uh, I'm at, in my office at my desk, which I spent most of my X-Files career at. Um, and uh, she's coming into my office, so what we did was we had, we, this, is, this is really kind of sexist and terrible, but we had this, this poor young lady crawl under my desk. Uh, <laughs> and, Go along. And, when, and when Jillian comes in, I'm like, <laughs> this little girl crawls out from under the desk. <laughs> just turned around and went back in. <laughs> Didn't say anything. <laughs> it was horrible. When you say little girl, <laughs> just check it. Just check it. I said little ish. Size, not young. Well, actually, she was young too. But, oh God, yeah, she, you just dig a hole. Dig a hole. Oh my God. Did she got that. You have one? No. Oh no. Callie, do you have another question over here? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Festive. Yeah. Aww. Love it. Thank you. This is actually way better than last year. Um, this is actually my second time coming, and I'm severely excited that you, Christopher, have come. Yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> Any 
time, darling. <laughs> anyway, I have a question for you and then one for each of you. Okay. Christopher. Yes. Is it true that you were in a Batman movie not too long ago? Yeah. As an extra. So my, uh, my mind is not deceiving me. It, it, what aired kind of looked like I was an extra, but let me tell you, the checks were main cast, baby. <laughs> Yeah, people, people asked me about that, and it, I worked on it for three and a half weeks, wow. and uh, it it, uh, it was I, I kind of knew it because I, I played um, Tom Tom Hardy's kind of right hand guy, but I'm so much bigger than Tom <laughs> that you know Bane is supposed to be this huge hulking character, and 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 Tom is not an overly tall guy, so uh, I, I kind of knew the the, the the writing was on the wall, but. I just didn't say anything because the catering was really good. <laughs> I, I knew that you were in the movie. I, I was watching it with my stepfather, and I'm like, "Is that? That's Teal! Oh my gosh!" He's in the, my favorite superhero is Batman. So one of the coolest, everything went together. It was great. One of the coolest things I've ever seen in, the, in this business is uh, the first day that I was on set, and. and uh, Bale came out in, in, in the costume. It was, it was pretty stinking cool. Really I was. can only imagine. <laughs> now, one for each of you. I was watching, um, I think it was Armageddon panel down in New Zealand. And um, it was with Robin Dunn and Amanda from Sanctuary. But I wanted to re-ask you guys because I think it would be kind of a cool question. What are each of your, uh, I don't know how to phrase this, Two worst words, like something you cannot stand. Like I cannot hear that word, those words. It's uncomfortable. It's you know, Robin's was. Uh, um. Yeah. I. Well, I can't say it. So. <laughs> I was advised not to. I get it. Spell it. Maybe <laughs> that doesn't count. There you go. Can you act it out? <laughs> No. <laughs> that, that's a negative. We're going to set the record for the most spills yeah. of any <laughs> kind of I my eyes closed. Yes. <laughs> this is water? <laughs> well, I can tell you one of them was plump, because the other one was not, it was a body part. Let's what, just say that. What was, what was it? Plump was one of them. Plump? plump. Yes, and he plump. cannot stand that word. Can't stand sorry, the word plump. What is that? Is that Billy Bob Thornton? He doesn't like antiques? What the hell? <laughs> Weird. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm pretty vulgar at times, so I, my, my gambit's pretty big. I don't know. Hmm. We gotta see, we're actors. We work in an industry where people swear all the time, so it's. Hey, I just did this movie, Patterson's Major, and I'm, I'm with a 12 year old playing my daughter, and I, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I've, the dialogue, I'm producing as well, and the dialogue's just going out of my head. And this, this kid here, like, she, she's such a pro. I'm like, ah, oh, mother, I can't believe I can't follow lines. Jesus. I, you're 12. <laughs> Whoops. And she goes, oh, I hear that shit all the time. <laughs> So there you go. A couple of those words I don't like when my mom's around, so there you go. <laughs> Girl after your own heart. Um, I think mine is uh, panties. I really don't like that word. Like, why? Panties. No, I don't like that. Um, and probably about, it's not a word, and that's what drives me crazy, but yet I hear it all the time. Irregardless. <laughs> That does drive me nuts when people make up words that don't exist. Yes. And then you try to tell them, you're like, look, dude, I've got a degree, uh, my under degree, under undergrad degree is in English. That's not a word. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess when I was a single dating man, I guess the word I hated hearing most was no. <laughs> of course, I didn't hear it very often. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> she spill some more water. I don't know. Mitch, you're up. It drives me crazy when my daughter says like. Yes. 
I mean, every other word is like. And it's, the other day I was listening to her talk to my wife, and it, it, was, it, it was, there were so many likes in, in, in her conversation. I just, I was in the other room, and I just screamed, stop saying like. <laughs> and uh, because of recently, I'm not, the, the, the word twerk is... Uh, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen eventually. I can't wait to see the tweets about that one. The Vine videos. Next question. Oh boy. That was worth the price of admission. Is that Joe Flanagan? Yeah. No, because he's actually talking to us. Yes, sir. What do y'all think of uh, Joe Flanagan? <laughs> what do you think of Joe? Oh. different cat um, and, and, take, and, and Joe is he, he's a great dude like once you get to know him but he he doesn't he's a little socially inept yes um, my first conversation with him <clears throat> at, at one point we thought that um, Stargate was gonna be canceled uh, the I, I think it was the first yet yeah, I know it was eventually um, <laughs> <laughs> so the original plan was that uh, Amanda and I were going to go over to to um, Atlantis. So uh, to get to know Flang and the uh, Brad and, and Rob and arrange a, a golf outing for us, and so it was a, it was a bit awkward. Um, Atlantis was a, a much different show, like behind the scenes than we were. We we. we SG-1 was a pretty loose ship, and, uh, and Atlantis wasn't. They, they were a bit more serious and, and, and things like that. So uh, it was a bit awkward between me and Flanagan because, uh, you know, we had been hurling insults at him for quite a while. And uh, in this awkward silence, the first thing he says to me is, um, so did you play much polo growing up? <laughs> It's like, that's your icebreaker? I'm a black dude from LA. Did I play much polo growing up? And I said, no, but I used to throw rocks at white people. So it really did, it took maybe a year, year and a half for me to actually get to know him. And, and he really is, he, he's, he, he really is a funny, smart, uh, smart dude. It just, it just takes a while to kind of get through the richness, <laughs> so, the wealth, the Kennedy-esque-ness of Joe. But no, I, he, he's, a, he's a great guy. I just spent two weeks with Joe and, and, uh, and Jason Mabal over at, at Armageddon in, uh, in New Zealand. And we had a great time. It was, he's, you know, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's a good dude. <laughs> so so, like so you, you played polo growing up. played polo. So. <laughs> I, I don't really know Joe very well. I've met him a couple times. Seems like an okay guy. But my doctor growing up who delivered me, he plays polo. <laughs> he's 76 and British. And white. <laughs> Those are the people that play polo. That's, so if anyone runs into Joe, just let him know. I had never uh, worked with Joe or met Joe, um, but he has nice hair. There you go. 
Next question. Next question. <laughs> well, first off, real quick, just I know how to play polo because my dad's 60, British, and old, and white, you know, so I just find that money. I wonder if you going to know that. I don't play, but I know how. Uh, I just find it really interesting that you needed to put white at the end of it. You started with saying you're a black guy, so, you know, escape the audience. I didn't, I didn't grow up throwing, you know, rocks at black kids. <laughs> oh, so you're not from the South. Atlanta is the new south. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, Mississippi is just right over there. <laughs> my, uh, my question is, we're all obvious huge fans of Stargate, and I was just wondering if you guys have any shows of your own that you're just really addicted to or huge fanfares. I'm guessing Big Bang Theory. Oh, oh. Big Bang Theory. Which, when I first saw it listed, I thought it was a completely different show. <laughs> You're a <the> dirty man. <laughs> um, I just, I'm so behind the times, but I just got into Breaking Bad. So I'm... My God, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so season three, episode two, I think that's where I'm at, so I just, yeah, I can't get enough. Cool. Um, like Chris, I'm also a, a huge Big Bang Theory fan. Um, I, I haven't bought a lot of t-shirts in my lifetime, but I was actually in a mall about two months ago, which I never go into. I had to go to London Drugs to get something. And they were selling Bazinga shirts, which I brought with me. I've got the red Bazinga, so yeah. there you go. Thank you, Bazinga. But my favorite show right now, actually, is Hell on Wheels. Yeah. I love that show. Actually, not because I was in it. I did two episodes last year, but I think it's one of the best written uh, series on television today. So there you go. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I like Modern Family. Um, nice. um, I, I just, you know, I, I just don't like a whole lot of TV. <laughs> Mitch, you're, right. you're, 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 not, you're not a funny guy, Mitch. I, I'm, 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 I'm hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Big, I don't, Big Bang Theory, you guys really like Big Bang Theory? I love it. I love it. Get it. I love it. I actually cold sent them a script, actually. I, I've been lobbying to be on the show for, yes. for four years. Yeah. I mean, I actually did the, I mean, it's just, you know, because, you know, Katie's been on there, um, Trish has been on there. Um, you realize that it's nerd boys with fantasies. That's why they are on there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of the script I wrote, like, because they did the whole back. So I did this whole thing where I, I, Penny meets me and we end up going on a date, da da da. And Sheldon has this dream sequence where, you know, the bathtub dream sequence. And you pan and it's me sitting in there and and Sheldon's just looking at me and, and I go um, Sheldon that is not my symbiote <laughs> slash fiction that one <laughs> That. <laughs> <laughs> <Like> PVR, <then. laughs> yeah. Next question. Um, first off, Bazinga. Um, I'm actually the son of the Stargate track director. Uh, um, for uh, Miss Jennifer. Wow, you're a meanie. <laughs> what do I do? That's your mom? <laughs> she, is she this mean at home? <laughs> yes. Question. She's got a whip in her back <laughs> Oh, you do? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go, go, go. Um, why would you like to be canine? Why would I like to be, what, sorry? Canine, from Dr. Who. Oh, canine, because I love dogs. I absolutely love dogs and I wish I had one, but we have two stupid cats. One of them I'm ready to euthanize. issues. <laughs> it's all worked out. <laughs> Next question. Oh, 
they have a conference. <laughs> Chris, yes. When you made the transition from Showtime to Sci-Fi, uh -huh. I'm sure there was a little questioning whether or not it was going to come back. But how different was it between being produced by Showtime and then under Sci-Fi? Um, one of the biggest differences <laughs> was the nudity. <laughs> Not just the one in my trailer. <laughs> um, <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> no, truly, like Showtime was so. We were. Showtime never expected us to be a hit. So when we were, we our 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 pilot at that time was the highest rated um, anything ever on cable, ever. So they kind of didn't know. We, we knew going in that we were going to do uh, 44. Our, our initial order was for 44. But then after the pilot aired, they signed us for another three seasons. So they really gave us the freedom to kind of do whatever we wanted to progress the show as quickly or as slowly as we wanted to. Um, so there was just a tremendous amount uh, of, of just leave them the hell alone. They know what they're doing. We don't. <laughs> And when we got to sci to sci-fy, that's S Y F Y. <laughs> they started giving us notes, like after five seasons, and a lot of the notes were from I'm not sure from who, but possibly people who had never watched the show. <laughs> and, and so it was. It, it got to be fairly humorous um, when the notes would come in, and I, I'd go up. To, to Brad or Rob's office, and we would just laugh at <laughs> the notes and then do whatever we wanted. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, uh, you, you know, sci fi tried to be a little more hands on than, than, than Showtime was, but it, it, in, the, in, the, in the end, it really didn't matter. We just did what we wanted. <laughs> it's just odd that. There's a network called Sci-Fi, they don't like Sci-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, I, and I think that's really, uh, <laughs> I just forgot I just did a movie for a minute, I should shut up. <laughs> um, no, it's, it, it really is, like, I, I know some of the stuff that they've got uh, in, in development, and uh, they really are, I think, really starting to go back to to hard sci-fi, which I think is very welcome. You know, it used to because remember the old days when, when we were young, like sci-fi was what's out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's that sense of wonder, and and, and sci-fi was always uh, at the genesis of ideas and technology, and, and now it seems like uh, a lot of the sci-fi is actually following rather than leading. And, and, and I, I think there's, there's kind of a big movement, not only on side but also just in Hollywood in general to start doing, to go back to like hard sci-fi shows. Okay. Next, uh, this will be our last question on the mic. Um, hi, this question is for all of you. Um, Joseph Malazzi was a producer and writer for all three shows, and I was curious, Joe Malazzi? <laughs> Pelosi, however you pronounce it. Okay, sorry. Um, and I know he has a blog, which I've read on and off over the years, and I was curious um, if you had any comments about the blog, when he would write about you in particular, and also I wanted to know about his chocolate parties. <laughs> what, did, what, did he, what did he write about me? <laughs> I want to know. Joe is, Joe is so ridiculously wonderful. Um, he's a strange little man. Um, he started, did, did he continue the chocolate party? Did oh, you guys yeah. Tell him? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, he is, I guess foodie would be the term. Yeah, totally. But, but he gets obsessed with things. And when he, I think with us, I think the first thing that he was obsessed with was Japanese baseball. I have no idea why, but he would like follow the stats and stuff of like Japanese baseball players.
colors and like research their uniforms and, and stuff like that. Like just all just that kind of detail. Yeah, he's he's bizarre. He's a bizarre <laughs> cat. And then I forgot what. I'm not sure if he, because at, at Sony they used to do this big chocolate thing every year, and I'm not sure if that's what led to it, but he, he, so everyone knew with Joe when Joe does something, it's going to be ridiculous, so I'm having this chocolate party. Okay, so we go to his house, and we're expecting there's going to be like Snickers, <laughs> and Three Musketeers bars. He has brought in chocolate from like, Belgium and, yeah. and China and you know wherever wherever the origin of chocolate is and he's got like this chocolate that you never heard of and there, and it, it, it it's it, it's so Joe how Moasi to to do something like that you know it's like, oh yeah I mean well and you know like women and chocolate have a very <laughs> special relationship. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> I got a Snickers right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, like insane in the membrane. Like I told, I wasn't thinking that either, like the extent to which he would go. But yeah, like chocolate from all over the world. The prettiest, most beautiful artwork on each individual piece to the point where it's almost like maybe I shouldn't eat this like it's so pretty but then you take a photo and you eat it and then um like i think that was the place where i had the best brownie i'd ever had in my life i can't remember where um because there was weed in it that's why <laughs> i was just you know as soon as i said that as soon as i said that um but yeah but he's like he's a very generous man he's a really really lovely lovely generous man and i love his blog because he's a hilarious writer and um yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next, too, because he's got that kind of a brain where you're like, what are you up to? I am um, lactose intolerant, so I don't do chocolate. <laughs> Just so you know. No, no, I do, I do chocolate. So uh, never, never went to the chocolate parties. I've heard a lot about them, though. And um, something about a woman being dipped one time, but oh. we'll talk about that later. So. <laughs> you said never tell. I was never invited to a chocolate party. <laughs> Ray Donovan. I do watch TV. Yeah. I'm just slow. That it took me that long. To yeah. So, some quick thing I want to mention: we talk about Stargates and real, real quick of the characters and whatnot. One thing about Stargate and the the producers and stuff, they, they really took good care of it. Um, uh, Michael Greenberg first up. Um, Dion Johnson and I were the two go-to guys for the alien work for a lot of the first uh, Stargate issue one. And uh, he said, like, we had a, a, a welcome pass anytime we could go on set, bring friends, relatives, visit. And, you know, we did a couple times. I never really used too much, but they took such good care of us in uh, all that big makeup and everything else. It's, it's one thing I always really liked. Like, Stargate was, like, whenever he came on set, like, it was loosey-goosey, but it was like family. So I was very appreciative about that. And that's probably why we're all sort of sitting here, because it translated, you know, and it kept moving. So I just want to say thanks, Stargate peeps. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys. That's a great note to end on. Unfortunately, we do have to end the panel. Uh, let's thank again, Chris. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> and Mitch. <laughs> These folks will be here at panels all weekend. Come see them again and ask your questions. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.